Stampers. My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me today. Um, I have a follow-up video for you. Last uh, week I did a video where I used the alcohol ben blends and more alcohol on vellum and we created some really fun backgrounds. And I promised to do a follow-up video this week using the Gilded Leafing product from Stampin' Up! Things that I like to call the Gilding Flakes. And so that's what I have for you today. I've got some of the samples that I showed you last time and then we're going to make a couple of cards today. So let's just get started. Okay, so what I'm doing is showing you, uh, I've lost a little bit of video here. So I'm using my blender pen in my Versamark and I put a lot of dashes across here. I'm going to add a couple so that you can see what it is I'm doing. And so I'm adding a few of those dashes and you can see here that I've got some of that heat and stick powder already on this one but I'm going to add some more heat and stick powder to those places that I just added some new. And in fact, it's sticking to the places that I had from before and that's all fine. Okay, so here we go. And it heats up really, really fast. So I'm going to run my heat tool against this and my heat tool is already heated up and you're gonna see it's about half the time. I'm gonna run this at real time so you can see just how quickly this goes. All right, so here we go. And that's all the time it took. And then you can see if I hold this up, all of those shiny spots, and that's the heat and stick powder uh, on my piece here. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways to add the gilding flakes. Um, and everybody says that they're messy and they go everywhere and that is true, but there's some ways to hold down the mess. So I've got my tweezer and I've got a little piece of the gilding flake here and I'm just going to set it down where I know I've got heat and stick powder and then I'm going to pick up some of that gilding flakes and I'm going to put it on the next place that I have some of that heat and stick powder and I'm going to burnish that in with my finger and then I'm going to take this larger brush and kind of push away at the gilding flakes and so you can go piece by piece on this and just set those gilding flakes down in that heat and stick powder and you can see you've got a controlled environment and you're not going to make a lot of mess. Now I'm going to take a big piece of the gilding flakes here. This piece right here and I'm going to spread it all the way down and across my piece of paper here and I'm going to burnish that in against the heat and stick powder that's there with my finger and roll some of that paper then or the gilding flakes across other places that I have the gilding flakes or that I have the heat and stick powder. And you can pick this up and put it in different places and do it that way. That's one of the ways. The other thing you can do is pick up a little bunch of the gilding flakes, a pinch of the gilding flakes like this, and you can rub it across your card. Now this is a little bit messier, but actually not too bad for getting the gilding flakes down. And then I'm going to burnish that with my fingers and I'm going to pick up my little wad of gilding flakes and see if I can't hit some of those places that I missed until I'm pretty sure I've got all of those places covered. Now then, I'm going to take my, I've got my gilding flakes in a shoebox, a 
plastic shoe box. And I know it looks like there is um, not very many, but this is actually quite a few gilding flakes. This is most of a container. And I have more containers coming because I love this stuff. It's so much fun to work with. And some people have asked, why bother? It kind of looks like um, um, embossing, but it really doesn't. In real life, it is much shinier and much more three-dimensional looking than it is on with embossing powder. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stuff over here and I'm going to bring my gilding flakes in and I'm going to just flick them back in here. Now this is just a piece of Kleenex, but a dry baby wipe will do. And I'm, you can be fairly firm with it. And I'm rubbing it against the, the piece of vellum here. I can see that I missed a spot down here. There we go. And you can just continue to add more if you do think you've missed them. And then wipe away right back into your bin. Now this is kind of a stiff brush and I found that that works pretty well too to just take the gilding flakes and get them put back into your container. And there I've got those dashes all covered where I had the gilding flakes. Now then, if I've been working and you just need to work with a big enough piece of scratch paper, I'm going to take my piece of scratch paper here and I'm going to hold it over my bin and I'm just going to brush these pieces back inside my bin. Now you can see I've got a little bit left here. I'm going to sweep them right into my bin and it really hasn't made too big a mess. Now, you can um, get a little bit of moisture on a baby wipe or a piece of tissue and just pick this up. Just It's almost like picking up glitter. So you could probably use a Swiffer cloth. You could probably use any number of things. And mm -hmm. there we go. I've got basically all of my gilding flakes filled up. And they've put gilding all over all of this, and it's really not that bad, and there's not a tremendous amount of waste. So that is that piece done. Now, I want to show you, and because I want to use that on this, this is some of our Terran tape. And I want to take a piece of Terran tape that is big enough to go across the, um, the, the length of my... Um, uh, vellum piece here and I think something like that will work and what I'm going to do is use my silicone mat here and I'm going to put this down right here along the center and then I'm going to draw this down all the way across my piece and put that in place here. There we go. And then I'm going to trim that off so that it fits perfectly on my piece of vellum. And then I'm going to use my pick tool here to um, sort of burnish that end and then pick up my tear tape release paper. Then I'm going to grab my gilding flakes again, and I'm going to do that business where I picked up a pinch of the gilding flakes, and I'm going to rub it all the way across this piece of tear tape. And you're going to start to see what happens here when you do that. You're going to get a good even stripe of this paper right on the um, on the piece of tear tape and you can burnish this in and you get different looks depending on 
how you burnish it in. And I, I just keep picking up more of the flakes and putting them back on the tear tape here. And scrape that on down to the bottom of my card. And there I've got that piece burnished right down the center. So you can use your tear tape also to apply the gilding tape. Uh, people tell me that they've used their tape runner to run along the edge. And then we're back to the same thing again, is putting back those pieces that we haven't used. And I'm going to start by getting as much off of my piece of card as I can. And then I'm going to get that off of my silicone mat back into my shoe box. And then I'll use my brush to get that off. And it's not coming off the silicone mat as easily as it did the paper. But I will be able to get it all back in there. All right, then I'm going to sweep up the remnants here back into my box. It is a bit messy, but it's not too bad. Not too bad. And then just check and see where I've got little bits and pieces and flick it back into my box. Okay, so here we go. Now I've got this piece this way, and I'm going to use my damp paper here that I was using before just to get those pieces off of my work surface here and pick up any residual gilding flakes which I can push back into my box. And then there is just a little bit of waste. Okay, so there is gilding flakes put on two different ways on my card. And I can see that I still have some here that's more than I need on here. And so I'm going to use my kind of stiff brush here to pull off these these gilding flakes. And then again, I'm just going to brush those back into my box. And it's really not too bad. Okay, now there's my piece. I had lost a little video earlier, so I showed you on this piece how to adhere the gilding flakes. This is the piece I actually want to work on for our card. And I did the same dash pattern on here. And this is cut one and three quarters by five. And then this piece is cut two inches by five inches. And the plan was to put this piece on here. So I'm going to, uh, and everybody wanted to know, I had lots and lots of, lots of questions on what I was using to adhere my vellum. And this is something that I've been experimenting with. This is a glue tape runner that is called Plus. And this particular Plus is a, a refillable kind of um, uh, tape runner, and it is specifically for adhering vellum. And the trick seems to be to not put very much. So I'm just going to put a little dash at the top and on either corner and a little tiny bit in the middle. And presumably when you put this on your project, you're not supposed to be able to see the uh, tape runner. And I would say that that's pretty true. I've been working with it for a little while. Originally, I got sent this by somebody on my team that had discovered it, Dot Sherlin, over on the Western Slope in Grand Junction. And I've been trying to use it on 
some of my projects here and it it seems to hold down the vellum pretty well and I'll let you be the judge I'll bring this right up to the camera here and I don't see any of the tape at all on this and so it works pretty well now it could also be because there's so much pattern on this that you just don't see it but I don't think that's the case okay so now next I have a piece of granny apple green that is just a little bit bigger than my um, my strip here and so it is cut at two and a quarter by five and a quarter so this one can handle my regular tape runner because it's now backed on card and so I'm going to set this on here with a similar border all the way around and then I cut a piece of Knight of Navy because the colors I used on this was Granny Apple Green, Misty Moonlight, and Knight of Navy. And I thought it would be very interesting to put this on a piece of Knight of Navy and it looks like I'm going to have to cut another piece here. So this piece is going to end up being five and a half by two and a half. So I have my piece of Knight of Navy cut five and a half by two and a half and I'm going to mount that right on that piece. And put that right down here. So there is my piece. Okay, here is my Whisper White card base that I ran through my with an embossing folder. Okay, the embossing folder that I used is this one, which is the Painted Textures 3D embossing folder. And I thought that the folder here had the same kind of look as this vellum piece that we did. And I thought I could set that up to fit right on this card front. And so I'm going to do that and I'm going to use quite a bit of seal because that is a very uneven um, surface. So I'm going to put four strips down on here and this should go right from the top of the card all the way down to the bottom edge of the card and there we go and then I thought because of the gold leaf that I would do something with our punch that is this punch I had cut out of gold paper this top piece that is the scallop because I thought that would go particularly well with this and then I have a small strip of white cardstock piece of scrap that I think will go across the bottom part of this yes it will and then I am taking the um, thanks stamp from here's a card okay there is my stamp and I'm going to use my Knight of Navy ink to put my sentiment on this little strip of white right in the center and then use my punch to take my thanks and punch it out 
and then set that in the gold. And I'm just going to put down a little bit of seal on the back of my sentiment and center it on my gold scallop there. And then I'm going to use um, a dimensional. I'm going to put a little bit of snail down on one side. And I'm going to use a dimensional on the other because we've created enough layers over here that it needs that in order to work. So there I've put some snail down on one side and a dimensional down on the other. So what I have is this ribbon, which is a beautiful dark blue. And this is some of the ribbon from the um, Boho Indigo um, medley. And it's just perfect for this kind of an idea. And I just want to put a bow knot on this and see if I can trim this so that it doesn't fray and get a little bow knot to go right along here. And I'm going to put that in place with a couple of glue dots. Put that into place right across this edge, just like that. Then our uh, holiday rhinestones have this beautiful, very dark blue um, rhinestone, and I'm going to. That's not on there very straight. I wonder if I can move that up just a little. There we go. I'm going to put one right here, and then I'm going to scatter a few of these around on the card. And there we go. There is the front of our card. Okay, for the inside of my card, I have a piece of Knight of Navy that is four by five and a quarter, a piece of granny apple that is three and three quarters by five. And then I have a piece of white that is three and a half by four and three quarters, which I'm going to layer in here and I'm sad I don't have another piece of this pretty paper to put on the inside of this, but I used all up that I made. So I'm going to put another piece of this ribbon across here, because I think it's so striking, and we'll have that be the decoration for the inside of this card. And then go ahead and put this in place. I know it's lots of layers. But I think in the end, it's got so much texture and is so pretty with the gilding flakes and then this on the inside as well that I think that is just a very pretty little card. Now then, I was going to also do the gilding flakes on my piece of vellum that I did the red and the magenta on. And so in order to do that, I have used some gilding flakes and some tear tape, just like I showed you earlier in the video, along the edge of this piece of card. And then I have this to go in the center of that card and then I thought we could put some of the uh, gilding flakes on this piece again using that um, this beautiful touch of ink stamp set. And I'm going to do very similar to what I did on this one. And 
put the butterfly and just maybe one small sprig of the flowers. So what I'm going to do is prepare this piece and I'm going to use my, and I did do this on all of the other pieces as well, use my anti-static tool here to get um, this front covered. Then I'm going to use my Versamark and I'm going to use my Butterfly and simply just this one sprig of flowers from that stamp set. So I'm going to set my Butterfly up right here and stamp that down and then use my flower again in the Versamark right here there we go and then I'm going to use my heat and stick powder. To capture my butterfly and my little sprig of flowers and I've had people tell me that they were going to do um, um, dragonfly wings and butterflies out of this paper to put on other cards too. I think that is a brilliant idea. Absolutely great. All right, now I'm going to use my heat tool again to heat this stick, heat and stick powder up and I'll be right back. Okay, it's done, and I think you might be able to see that if I move it in the light where I've got the heat and stick powder. So now that I've got that, I'm going to reach for my gilding flakes again. I've decided that I kind of like this pinch a few gilding flakes together and then rub it across my image. then I can use my fingers to burnish in the gilding flakes to the uh, heat and stick powder. And there we go. Now again, I'm just going to pick this up, put it, oops, <laughs> well I meant to pick it up and put it right over my box, but I didn't do that. So I'm just going to sweep these into my hand and there you can see it's not too big a mess again. Uh, a few gilding flakes stuck to little bits of glue on my work surface. Um, but there is my piece. Now I'm going to use that same dry baby wipe and I'm going to continue to bur burnish that in and also sweep away any extra of those gilding flakes that are in excess. And there we go. I'm going to shake those into my box. And there we go. There is my image. Isn't that pretty? Now that image is going to go onto this piece. And isn't that stunning? So I'm just going to use my plus adhesive here to add a little bit of this adhesive to the back side of my vellum. And I'm going to put that into place on my card front. So this piece is now adhered to my card base. So there we have that piece. Now then we have to decide 
what kind of a uh, message we want on here. And I'm thinking of Butterfly Gala and the a little note um, stamp. And I'm thinking that for contrast, I'm going to stamp a little note here in black. And I'm going to put it right down here on the bottom of my card. A little note. Mm, I don't know. I'm not very happy with that. Okay, I've decided that I don't like the way that looks. And I tried the Magenta Madness on here, and I'm not crazy about that. And then I tried the red, and I'm happier with that. A little happier. Um, so I don't know what the right thing is. Maybe I should do this and put gilding flakes over my little note. Um, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this piece on here. Cut it down. And put it on my card. A little note down here at the bottom. Cover up this piece that I have here. I think I like that a little bit better. And uh, I don't know, uh, is that too much gilding flakes on this card? You'll have to tell me what you all think. I'm going to put a few dimensionals on this piece and put that in place on my card. It almost feels like too much. Again, you'll have to tell me what you think. I love the paper. And maybe a little of it goes a long way, and I should just have used a bit of it to do something. Maybe I can fussy cut those two pieces out and put them on something else. I don't know. Anyway, you'll have to let me know what you're thinking. Here are the two cards that we made today. Here are the other cards that I had made earlier using this technique. But I did want to show you a couple of ways to add the gilding flakes. And this is one of those things that I think you just need to get in there and kind of mess around with until you get um, uh, what makes you happy in the end. Okay, so here are all of the cards, including the two that we made today. And um, that is it for me today. This is February, and my prize draw for the month of February is going to be a $60 shopping spree on me on anything in any of the live catalogs. And there you have all of the projects. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, well, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Or you could join my team. Um, during celebration, we've got just a month left now of celebration. Um, the join offer is $125 worth of product for $99 plus an additional five packages of designer series paper. One for each of the color families and one for the 2122 in colors. And so uh, again, that's it for me. I'll be back soon with more cards, um, more projects, and more tips. Bye!